Hello and welcome to the United Community Channel. This is your match preview for Manchester United versus Galatasaray in the Champions League. This is a must-win game. We've got plenty to get into. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Let's get right into it. Now, first off, we're going to talk about players in position. Now, look, we've seen over the past couple of games, obviously with injuries, we've seen some players playing out of position and none more so than Amrabat since he's come in to the side. Obviously, he started his Manchester United career off with an injury and he's been playing at left back basically since he came into the side. And I think going forward, because our performances have been so bad, and we've been seeing players play slightly out of position to make up for injuries within the squad. I think we just have to go back to basics here. I think we need to play players in their correct position. I think Amrabat needs to play in midfield. I think that probably means you have to push the likes of maybe Lindelof from centre-back out to full-back. Does it mean he goes to right-back or to left-back? That depends, because we know Delo can play left-back as well. So maybe Lindelof goes to right full that then means that Harry Maguire comes into the side alongside Raphael Varane. But I think it will give us more balance. I think if we can play Amrabat and Casemiro together in midfield, all of a sudden it looks like a midfield that has energy. Even though we've only seen it for about 45 minutes already this season, I think it gives us energy. It, we look a lot more secure, a lot more structured. That then allows us to maybe use the likes of Mason Mount on the right-hand side if you want. I think we're going to have to see more of Mason Mount on that right-hand side. And the reason being is that he is a more creative player than he is, you know, as a, maybe a defensive style player or, or box to box. Rasmus Highland is not getting an awful lot of supply. And we do tend to get the ball wide an awful lot. We, we don't tend to play the ball through the middle as much as we do try to play on the outside. And with the likes of Palestri there, you know, albeit he has a very talented footballer, his end product is not that great. I think if we could put the likes of Mason Mount on that right-hand side and his specific job is to feed Rasmus Highland all of the time, I think we'll score a lot more goals because Rasmus Highland, I have been impressed with him, you know, since he started his Manchester United career. He just has not been getting that supply. So I think playing players in the right position is vitally important you know and we know Mason Mount can play on that right hand side and then you can change it you know if you do go a goal or two up and you need to take Casemiro off and give him a rest you can bring Mount back into the middle and keep possession a little bit more so on and so forth but I think over the next few games for United to get out of the slump that they're in we have to start playing players in their correct positions now next up play the kids uh, we've, we've got some good talent young talent in this Manchester United squad, you have to say, the likes of Hannibal breaking through, obviously Palestri on that right-hand side, and then, of course, Alejandro Garnacho. And I'm going to focus this basically on that left-hand side position because Garnacho, in my opinion, should come into the side. Now, he started off on that left-hand side for the first few games of the season and stunk the place out, stunk the whole place out because his performances weren't good, you know. And rightly so, he was taken out of the team you know, and given his uh, his period on the bench. Now, if you're going to be doing that for Alejandro Garnacho, you should be doing it for Marcus Rashford as well. I think Marcus Rashford has been really, really poor so far this season. Has he scored yet? I don't think so. Or maybe one goal so far. Uh, and, you know, in the short term, over the last few games, he's been really, really poor. His decision-making is bad. He's running into dead ends. He's not getting his head up. He's not you know, looking for his teammates, a.k.a. Rasmus Highland, who is making unreal runs for him, you know, on multiple occasions in each game, and he's just not getting the ball to him. And we see when Garnacho came on the other day, albeit we did lose the game, Garnacho instantly put us on the front foot every time the ball went out onto that left-hand side. And I know Marcus Rasher runs at fullbacks as well, but Garnacho tends to run at fullbacks with purpose. He runs with his head up rather than his head down. And... You know, he can see when he's been doubled up on, maybe. He can see maybe if he has to turn back, you know, and keep possession. He can see when he needs to cross the ball. He can see when he needs to get to the end line and take on a defender or cut inside and have a shot. I think his decision-making at the moment is much, much better than Marcus Rashford's. And look, I was all praise for Marcus Rashford last year. And I'm going to be critical of him now because you can only go off of current form. 
You know, Marcus Rashford scored 30 goals last season. Unbelievable. The main reason for us being, you know, in the top four and winning a trophy was Marcus Rashford. But this season, he has completely dropped off. Is that because he's got his new contract? I'd, I don't think so. I don't think he's that unprofessional. Uh, he, but he's going through a very difficult phase at the moment. And I think he has to be treated like anybody else. He needs to be dropped. And not just because he's playing bad, but I think Garnacho has played so well in the moments that he's come on. I think he needs to start. You know, you could see, you know, obviously we mentioned already, you know, the likes of Amrabat going into midfield. If Ten Hag decides to continue playing him at left back, then I would like to see Hannibal come in uh, instead of him in the centre midfield because of the energy levels that he gives, because of the, the fearlessness that these young players have that are willing to get on the ball, willing to take it forward and willing to try and affect the game. You know, we've seen the, the, the likes of Scott McTominay not just this season, but over the last four or five years, hiding on the pitch, not wanting to get on the ball, afraid to try and create anything. And I think Hannibal instantly has already jumped ahead of him in, in the pecking order. So I want to see the kids playing a lot more over the next few games because, again, this kind of doubles up on, on my first point in terms of playing players within their correct position. I think if we play the kids, it will allow us to do that a lot more. Now, again, you do have to get the balance right. You don't want everything to be, you know, relying on, on, on maybe two or three youngsters. That's not fair. It's too much pressure on them at such a young age. But I do think that, especially the likes of Garnacho and Hannibal, Pelestri is still a bit raw, but Hannibal and, and, and Garnacho certainly do have the minerals there to, you know, to say, I want to be part of this team. Start me. I'll, I'll do okay. And you have no issue because they work hard. And if you have to take them off, then you're okay with it. Because they're only youngsters, you say, okay, you mightn't have had a good game. You get that bit of you know, freedom and, a, and that bit of time because you're a youngster. If you don't have a good game, then you can bring on your Mason Mounts or move Amrabat up into midfield, whatever it may be. But I want to see more of the kids. Now, let's talk about Galatasaray and... You can never, ever, ever, ever take Galatasaray for granted in the Champions League. Really, you, you really can't. Now, again, look, Galatasaray make home advantage count an awful lot. And obviously, they're coming to Old Trafford for this game. So, you know, it should be advantage Manchester United. Now, look, in the league, they're second in the league at the moment. They're two points behind Fenerbahce. They've won their last three games in the league, albeit they haven't scored an awful lot of goals. I mean, their last three uh, victories, uh, a 1-0 win and two 2-1 wins. And of course, in the Champions League, they've already drawn with Copenhagen. And if we're talking Manchester United here more than anything else, we need to be taking advantage of that result. We need to get three points here. Three points are absolutely vital because it gives us that breathing space between, you know, Galatasaray and Copenhagen. Look, we did lose the first game, so technically they are ahead of us in the league table. But the Galatasaray and Copenhagen games are the ones that we need to win, especially at home if we want to be getting out of this group. Uh, Galatasaray are not going to be easy. They really aren't. They're always dogged. They're always hard to break down. And you would probably expect them to sit low, you know, in a low block against Manchester United, like a lot of teams do when they come to Old Trafford now. And I think the reason for that is is because opposition teams now know that Manchester United do struggle against a low, back, a low block. We get to the final third and we run out of ideas. So we're really going to have to be on our game. I go back to what I've said in the last few games. When it comes to the opposition and Manchester United, especially playing at home, we need to take our chances early. We are starting games quite well. The majority of games this season we've started quite well and we haven't taken our chances. We need to take our chances because the longer a team like Galatasaray stay in the game, the better chance, obviously, they will have of winning. That sounds like a Michael Owen quote, but you know what I mean? It's true. And it tends, with Manchester United, the more we're not ahead in the game, the less confidence we seem to have as the game progresses. So we need to take advantage, get a goal early, and then manage the game out. But again, like I said, Galatasaray are not going to be an easy walkover, and we're really going to have to be on it from minute one. Now, this is the predicted 11, so let's get right into it. This is the 11 that I would go with more than anything else. And look, we've mentioned already, you know, the type of team that I want to see uh, in relation to, you know, players playing in position and players, you know, I suppose getting a chance. Uh, so I'll put it up on the screen and let me know what you think. So um, in relation to the starting 11, I'm going to go with obviously Andre Onana in goal. I would go with a back four of Lindelof at right back. 
I'm going to put Delo at left back and then I'm going to bring in Harry Maguire to play alongside uh, Varane. Reason being for this is that that allows Amrabat then to go up into midfield. I think midfield is going to be a lot more important in this game. Uh, so a midfield three then of Casemiro, Amrabat and Bruno Fernandes, like I said before, gives us legs in there. It gives us defensive quality and it also takes an awful lot of the pressure off of Casemiro to try and have to do it all on his own. Uh, and I think it will allow Bruno Fernandes naturally to play further up the field uh, and not have to worry about the defensive side of his game as much and you would hope then he can create more for the likes of Rasmus Highland. Forward three then. Uh, Rashford is not in this team. I'm bringing Garnacho straight in on the left-hand side. That's what I would do. I'm going to bring Mason Mount in on the right for the reasons that I mentioned previously. Creating chances for the likes of Highland. And then of course Highland through the middle. Now, this is what I would go with. I'm sick of giving my predicted 11 because it's never right. And I don't think we've really got I haven't 100% fully agreed with with one yet this season albeit the majority of the team you know you would have to agree with given the injuries that we have so this is the team that I would go with big talking point there in relation to Harry Maguire coming in at centre back so let me know what you think about that in the comment section below but I think it's justified given the fact that we need to get Amrabat into midfield and start controlling games a little bit more. But like I said, let me know what your predicted 11 is in the comments section below. Now, let's get into a score prediction. And I, this has to be a close game, in my opinion. Not because Galatasaray are, you know, a fantastic team by any stretch of the imagination. But it's because Manchester United haven't been playing well. Score prediction is going to depend an awful lot on the type of team that Ten Hag actually puts out. And like I said, we've mentioned it throughout now. Proper players playing in proper positions. Score prediction. I mean, I can't see us going the entirety of the game without conceding. But I do think we'll score as well. I think it's vitally important that we get three points here. It's a must. It has to be the case for Manchester United that we go out and get three points. I'm going to go with a 2-1 win to Manchester United. I think it'll be close... I hope it's not because obviously I'm going to the game and uh, you know I want to see goals, I want to see positivity, and all of that. But again, like I said, it's going to come down and it's going to come down to whatever team he puts out. We need to show an awful lot more than what we did on the weekend against Crystal Palace. It was a nothing performance. No heart, no hunger, no desire, no quality, no end product. All of them things need to improve for this game. And like I said, we've got no points in this Champions League group so far. And this is where we need to pick up three points and get on the board. Because like I said, these games against Galatasaray and Copenhagen away and at home are vitally important if we're going to come out of this group uh, and go into the knockout stages. Let me know what your score prediction is in the comment section below, guys. Please smash a like on the video. Hit subscribe, hit share, turn on the bell notification. Like I said, I will be at the game tomorrow night, so there won't be any watch along. Uh, but I will be giving my match reactions and stuff like that from Old Trafford. So make sure you tune in for that as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in a bit.